Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to it's it's okay not to be okay. Um, some of you may have attended uh, my session a while back, um, and on my journey, I've learned that we we need we need a constant reminder on this on this topic in particular, um, as we we having to engage with and deal with the realities of of living life. So I wanted to to start off just to introduce myself, those of you who've, who did one of my webinars before. My name is uh, David King, um, and I am a learning and development specialist or consultant. Um, I have a background in human resources um, and been privileged to spend many years um, in different corporate environments um, and startups. And for the last two years, I've been a free agent um, on my own, um, being able to pursue the three key elements um, that I'm exceptionally passionate about, and that's leadership development, um, employee wellness, and diversity and inclusion. Um, and I'm particularly fascinated from a psychological perspective, how our minds work. And so I do a lot of research on um, neuroscience um, and the link to to mental wellness and mental well-being um, and that is exactly what um, today's session is going to go to be on I want to make it as participatory as possible as always so please pop um, any questions you have um, in the Q a um, if you are able to unmute, I believe the functionality is not available, but if magically you can, um, please unmute and ask um, any questions. So I'm going to pause from time to time just to to reflect on on the content and maybe to reflect on some of the, the questions. And then at the end, we will I'll have a, a full on um, a Q and A. So please feel um, uh, please feel that you are able to to ask anything. Um, and that this is a safe environment to to share and unpack. I know you don't know you don't know everybody, um, but first of all, I love you just to pop in your where you're coming from. It's always nice to to see the the length and breadth of um, participation across the country. Um, and then we're going to um, get going. So let me start with my presentation while you pop um, in your locations. Welcome Suzanne from Derbs. Welcome Cape Town. We normally have a lovely spread across these fair lands of South Africa. We've got a full house today. It's fantastic. So it just shows you that the need is great and you're not alone. And that's an important message um, for me to share today. Welcome, Tanya. Welcome, South Coast. Right, let's get going. So that's the title of of today's webinar and as um, you may have experienced a previous webinar webinar of mine I'm a great believer in taking content and making it applicable so as much as we could get lost down rabbit holes of uh, academia um, it's really about what can I use or take away from today that can help me cope in this crazy world because really this is, we need to talk more up this language of not pretending everything's okay when it's not okay, because I'm sure you have a long list of, of current frustrations and challenges and pains and sufferings, and yet we have to carry on. Um, so see it as, as I often say, see today's session as an opportunity to tackle some tools and tips and techniques to cope and survive um, in this crazy world. There's no magic wand, is my favorite statement. There ain't no magic wand that's going to fix everything. 
We're not here to fix anything. We, we're here to unpack some solutions to how we can continue without curling up into little ball um, or giving up um, the eternal hope that, that we strive for. I'll start with this slide because I think, once again, some concepts get hijacked. And mindfulness is a term that has definitely been hijacked and overcomplicated. It has been around forever. It is not, it's just become trendy. And the best description I've ever come across with regards to mindfulness is being here, being now, being in the moment. For me, that means it's when I'm doing something that is helping me not to be stuck in the past or lost in the future. Okay, I'm going to repeat that. So mindfulness is being here and now or doing something even if it's a moment in time that stopped me from being stuck in the past or being lost in the future. So I'm going to bring that theme through um, as we discuss a lot of um, elements today. And um, I think it's vitally important to remember that we all are capable of being lost in something and it might be temporary, which is fine because the past and the future ain't going away. They're going to be there when we finish, whatever we do, whether that's doing a form of exercise, baking, cooking, sewing, dancing, praying, playing with dogs, playing with children, looking at a photograph, listening to, listening to a song. Anything that you do uh, that keeps you in the now and that you're not lost in the past and the future. So I thought that was a lovely way just to, to explain, um, explain mindfulness. Right, so let's let's acknowledge some stuff because so often we don't acknowledge. We talk about the elephant in the room. Oh, we're shocking at the elephant, not talking about the elephant in the room. Um, and I'm on a mission to be more aware of what I'm feeling and what's and what's not. So how about this? We're so often taught that everything's going to be okay and you must be fine. And when people ask you how you are, you say I'm fine um, because we don't want to burden people. You think, ah, people aren't interested in, in our issues. So listen to this. Um, you're human, okay? So it's normal to be sad from time to time, to not have your life together or to have everything together, um, to feel unsure, confused, or conflicted, um, to feel ugly, having a bad day, to feel unprepared, um, or disappointed in how things have turned out, to have a tough day, to not be always jolly and happy, um, to fluctuate in weight, to be more productive in some days and less in others. So this is this is what being human is all about. Okay, so we have good and we have bad days. So when we have a bad day, it's to acknowledge I'm having a crap day. But the key is to find out where is it coming from? What's, what's the cause of, my, of my, my bad day? And that it will not last forever. As my, one of the mantras that I like to use, now this too short, like COVID, like load shedding. Um, hopefully the next time we chat um, in a while, um, I'll be able to say remember load shedding. Because guess what? As much as we can sit with our, our pity parties and complain and moan, this too shall pass. No chilling will pass. Um, this slide is just to remind us also not to become overwhelmed because it's very easy to become overwhelmed by everything that you are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Relationships, finances, for example, biggies that we, we, we deal with um, from a psychological perspective. And if you look at this image, we tend to focus on um, the, the, the expectations of where we're supposed to be and what we've got to get through. And it's a, ma a mammoth hurdle or mountain that we need to approach. So shifting our mindset as to the little image on the right here, is to focus on one step at a time. And you've heard this numerous times, but we don't practice it because we get caught up in the anxiety. And what does anxiety do? 
it robs us of the mindfulness of being in the moment and forces us to be lost in the future instead of being here and now. There's wonderful, wonderful research on this concept called contradiction. Okay. So we have all been brought up in a society where we've told that contradiction is wrong. It is unnatural. It's uncomfortable. It's not how it should be. Well, you just have to look around you. You just have to maybe do some reflection and look back and do some hindsight and maybe look around at nature. And what do you see? Contradiction. So contradiction, um, another way of saying it is this paradox of life, is realizing that you can have um, conflicting or opposite things happening at the same time in your life. So we can feel both joy and sadness. We can feel um, anxiety and excitement. We don't have to think that everything's got to always run smoothly or the polar opposite, everything's got to run not smoothly. You can have confliction and confliction is normal and is natural. So that's why I love this word, acceptance of contradiction. Okay, so we could spend much further, but I just wanted to introduce this concept that maybe we can we can tackle in a in a in another webinar because it really is insightful. It is really interesting. But for now, I just want you to acknowledge that we need not fear contradiction, and it's okay to have contradicting feelings, for example, at the same time, which we're going to look at now. So I'm going to tackle the the feelings issue. And on that subject of contradiction, it's about the ebb and flow. So as we know, we have four official seasons, um, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. They are all necessary. We may prefer some seasons over others. At times, we may, we may wish to avoid, or we don't enjoy, or we don't want to even participate in a season but we don't have any control over that, do we? So as with nature, there are seasons. And as with our existence on this earth, we're going to go through seasons. So instead of fighting it or not acknowledging it, we have to sometimes accept, well, I'm going through a bit of a winter spell, or I'm going through an incredible spring or summer spell, or I'm feeling iffy, it's autumn. And if we unpack each season, we realize it's, it's completely necessary and normal and natural. We can bring the psychology of why it's got to happen. So do you see how it's just shifting your attitude or your, your mindset um, to how you approach or to how you, you see um, the seasons? And I bring this into all my, 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 my trainings, my presentations, and you would think we shouldn't have to, but we do, to remind humans that they're human because we get lost in the, in the, in the complexities of life and these ridiculous expectations and comparisons. And that's another whole topic to talk about, comparisons and expectations. But at the end of the day, we are human. And what does human mean? Human means that we are going to go through pain and suffering and we're going to go through hardship and we're going to have good days and we're going to have bad days and that no, nothing external, as much as we want somebody else to come along and to, to help us and to restore us and to fix us and to make us better, that's not going to happen because it's all about, all about inner work. So... Before I stop and look at some, some chats or Q&As, um, I want you to pop in to the chat whether you believe wisdom comes with age. Just say yes or no. Don't overcomplicate it. Does wisdom come with age? Say yes or no. Pop it in the, pop it in the chat, please. Let's see the poll. 
I should have done a poll, but I haven't got no time for polls. Right, so uh, let me check who else has joined us. Welcome, Pine Town. Welcome, Underberg. Right, so we've got a mixed bag here. I think we've got we've got yes, no, no, yes, no, no, yes, 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 no, yes, 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 no. And we've got yes, yes, no. Okay, so yeah, we've got a we've got a more or less 50-50. Okay, and I love asking this question. Not that I'm I am all knowledgeable. But what my, this is just my, this is my understanding. So it should, let's put it this way. So life should be teaching us stuff that makes us wise, simply because we've been through crap. Um, and we, we should have learned from our mistakes and learned from other people and ex amazing experiences, good, bad, and ugly that we've had should make us wiser. Until I met some old people that perhaps weren't very wise. It's like, but how do you live a whole life and you still don't come across very wise? But remember, that's quite judgy because remember, judging other people is also a pointless exercise. Anyway, for the, for the sake of this argument, um, and then I met some young people that were incredibly wise, eighteen-year-olds, and I was like, ah, how does this? How does this happen? This, this is, this is confusing me. And having spent many years on this journey of mental wellness and well-being, I've come to understanding that wisdom comes from the inner work we do. So wisdom comes from self-reflection. Wisdom comes from having been faced with stuff in life, pondering, thinking, thinking sometimes changing and realizing that maybe some of my viewpoints are outdated or it's part, maybe one of my biases or because of my upbringing, my culture, my religion, my gender, my sexuality, my story, that I have created this understanding of what um, I'm supposed to be or what's right and wrong. So we become fixated with what's right and what's wrong. And my value system is right and I compare it to other people and it's not the same, so they must be wrong. And we do that with religion. We do that with politics. We, we're very good at that. Instead of being open to listening, people just have a different life than me. And I can't change their background, their upbringing, their culture, their religion, their biases, but I can get to understand it. Okay, so hopefully my long waffle makes sense. So your wisdom come our wisdom comes from our inner work it doesn't necessarily come from the, the amount of time we've lived on this earth although it should okay right let me check if there's any questions no questions yet okay to pop those questions in and we can tackle them at a, at a late um, um, just now so let me get back to presentation right so How's this? Talk about mindfulness and not being stuck. So the past is a place of reference, not a place of residence. The past is a place of learning, not a place of living. Thank goodness there are lots of wise people that come up with these incredible sayings. So every now and again, I come across a, a saying and I'm like, hmm, it hits home. And I think that's what I've learned, hopefully, in my journey of life, is that not everything... You're going to connect with everything. And for you, it might be, ah, for me, it might be an incredible, insightful statement. And for somebody else, they'll be like, eh, because we're all in different places in our lives. Okay. And that's an important message because something might be necessary for me to get, but not for somebody else. So don't be quick to judge. Don't be quick to poo poo or shun somebody else's um, concepts or views. Because it might may all be sometimes it's just around just just around timing. But I I think this is a very valid statement, okay, because we all have a past and we all get stuck in our pasts. We all have unresolved challenges and issues and stories. But to see it as a reference point rather than a place that I get stuck in, because that's the danger. When we get stuck in the past 
and we are unable to um, unable to move forward. Another quote, and then I promise you I won't bombard you with with quotes. And uh, this one, this one gets to me, especially when I'm going through a tough time, but I think it's exceptionally helpful. So for the, some of you that are also Durban based and live in the north, um, some of us, about 100,000 people were affected, but no water for eight days. And it's very easy to, to curl up into a little ball and go have a pity party or start pointing fingers and blaming others, which you can. But I always try, and some days I get it right. But on eight, on day eight, I had certainly I was I was I was losing my my sense of humor on day eight, and I had to dig deep on day eight. But nothing ever goes away until it has taught us what we need to know. And I think that's that's for me. I always have to chuckle when I read that because it's it stops me immediately and reminds me that what's the lesson. What's the learning? Or what do I, it may be something I need to change, or it may be something I need to reassess. Um, and I just found, I find it very, very helpful because it, in a way it, it, it grounds you. And I do, I do some amazing work with one of my clients is NetCare. They, they're driving an initiative on empathy and compassion. So the science behind, not the, not the, the fluffy tree hugging stuff, but the, the neuroscience behind empathy and compassion. And one of the concepts that comes out um, in that is humility, that everything starts with humility because humility is, a, is, a, is an exceptional superpower that we have again as humans, but we tend to see it as a weakness. It's like kindness. We go, yeah, we know we're supposed to be kind, but kindness ain't going to get you nothing. Well, actually... What humility does, it stems from the word humilitas, which means from the ground or from the earth. So it's almost, I see it as a root or a foundation. So humility grounds us and stops us from, for me and personally, from being hooked and triggered by what's going on in the world or by other people. So it reminds me to stay humble, not to be hooked, by what, what politicians are saying, as we know, we have an election coming up and our politicians, politicians start with their stories. Um, and they're just doing that to, to, to win, win us over because they want us to vote for them. But don't get hooked by it. Um, so as we know, great hooker, um, fake news, conspiracy theorists are rife. Don't fall down their conspiracy theory trap very easy to do so. We've had lots of examples of that recently. And um, COVID was a prime example. We can always find some unverified something, some extreme viewpoint, as always there will be. But humility is not going to let you fall down that hole. Okay? Because it's going to ground you and make you assess whether going down that road is actually going to be good for your well-being and your, and your mental health. Right, so just some imagery here. I'm sure some days, as we are talking, it's okay not to be okay. That we're feeling like this because we are bombarded with, with insanity, um, bombarded with children, relationships, difficulties in, with finances, um, work challenges, work pressure, um, and then having to go home after a hectic day of work and someone saying, what's for supper? And or you prepared supper and somebody says, oh, we're having that again. And that's going to be a that's obviously going to be a trigger. Yeah. Um, sometimes we feel like this. Um, we're going to explode. And often we we feel like this is because we haven't been looking after ourselves, have we? We've perhaps been looking after everybody else. Or we've been so busy at work, we've neglected our exercise or eating properly or our relationships. And as soon as something is out of kilter, as psychologists will tell us and scientists now, that if something is out of kilter in our life, it's probably because we haven't been focusing our energy there. Oh, and that's also a question we do not like to hear. 
because we have been focused somewhere else. So naturally, something else is going to suffer. So if we at work 24-7, guess what's going to happen? Relationships are going to suffer. If we're not spending time with our partners, our relationship with our partners is going to suffer. If we're distracted by um, life or we're distracted by finances, um, something is going to suffer in some way. If we're living on social media, if we're getting hooked into obsessions such as pornography or even fitness, because guess what? You can become obsessed with fitness. Any extreme obsession is unhealthy. Okay. Some days you just want to do this and you're allowed to. You're allowed to say, oh, I'm going to just have a good cry. Um, and, and fortunately, science now supports us on this, this crying theory because actually crying helps us to release um, frustrations and um, hurts and anxieties. And sometimes we need to just get it out of our system. But we feel awkward and uncomfortable. And we've been told, don't be emotional. Let things go. Stop being so sensitive. Suppress, suppress, suppress. And you wonder why we, we do this or we do this. Okay, so there's nothing better than a good cry. So maybe that's part of your homework is to um, have a good cry. Feeling down in the dark. Oh, we've got lots of valid reasons, don't we, as South Africans? Whoa. Load shedding, um, water shedding, uh, interest rates, the economy, and my finances are, are depleted. Um, we told all the time South Africans are terrible savers. So what's our answer? We go, obviously, we're terrible at saving because we ain't got no money to save. So that's a reality. That's a reality. How do you carry it? How are we supposed to, how are we supposed to carry on? So going back to the concept around feelings and emotions, I think that's where it starts. And yet none of us have been, I can't say none of us, majority of us have not been effectively schooled or skilled in um, feelings and emotions. So it's unlikely that we're going to feel like this 24-7, but we need to have moments in our day or maybe in our week where we do perhaps put on some music and dance like a crazy person. Uh, I haven't, I haven't, I've done that once before and it was quite, it was quite um, therapeutic actually um, to put on music and just go crazy, okay, pick your favorite songs and do it. But this is just to show you that it's sometimes we, we, we hold ourselves back from doing something different um, and yet just by doing this, it may seem very daft and silly but the research and the science tells us and psychologically it's, it's exceptionally healthy for us because what are you doing you you're linking music to emotions to movement to memories um your vagus nerve and that's another whole fascinating science to go and explore um it's being triggered um, and it helps us reduce anxiety and depression and frustration and, and, and gives us the ability to think clearly because we're getting oxygen to our brain to be innovative, to be creative, to be forgiving. So it's like, it's, it's a no brainer. And yet we think, how can this dancing around listening to music help me in this crazy world? Well, the science is there. We just need to sometimes just do it. So I've I've used you I've used these slides before. So I think we can acknowledge that we often feel like this, uh, like we're in a thunderstorm. And the reality is, thunderstorms are necessary. You know, we've had massive storms um, in the Western Cape and the Eastern Cape, um, and you're still mopping it up. And and it's been loss of lives. It has been tragic. Um, and yet if we're not talking about global warming, it's often necessary because when storms come along, what do they do? They 
cleanse, they clean, they wash away. They bring relief, they bring rain. Um, and especially in areas that, like the Eastern Cape, where they've been suffering from drought, this may be the turning point. Okay. So we don't always see the good in something. Um, we, we're fearful of the noise and the damage naturally that's, that's done. And we all strive to be here, to have peace and harm, peace and calm and harmony. Um, and I don't think most people would deny that. Okay. So some people do like a bit of vibe or excitement, um, but I think there's a lovely concept around rest and repair. So, you know, when we, when, we, when we do finally get some time to rest, we tend to feel we've got to do something in that, in that rest. And that's another important learning. So when we rest, you must rest. So rest means you mustn't do anything. Okay. And a lot of people battle with that. I, I personally haven't, but my wife, my wife has. She came from a family that was, you had to, you never kept still. You had to, you, they were obsessed with lazy people, which they hopefully will discover in their life journey that, la that, that people are very quick to judge laziness because when you're doing nothing, it actually gives your brain the ability to, to unpack and to restore and to reflect and to look around rather than the busyness because as soon as you're busy, busy, busy all the time, what happens? You to process, you think, to be innovative. So why I mention this is because we need to always rest and recuperate or rest and restore. So you need to rest first, then you can go and do stuff. Okay, so don't think when you go on leave that I've got to, can't waste every moment on my leave. I've got to do, 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 go, go, go. And you end up running around doing chores or if you're fortunate enough, you're able to go away. But even when you're going away, you've got to go and sightsee and explore and do stuff. Well, remember, to start off with, with pure rest. And your body will actually tell you, but we don't listen to our bodies enough. Um, just a quick reminder about Booker. Um, so it's a lovely expression because it really explains the world that we're living in. And once again, it's the acknowledgement. The elephant in the room. So let's stop denying that the world is a wonderful place because the world is a flippin' messy place. We must find wonder within. But it's volatile. It is uncertain, it's complex, and it's ambiguous. And it's our journey now to, to, to find out how we can actually cope and how we can survive um, in this, in this um, complete sanity of the world that is flying around us. Remember, you are human. Okay, so never lose that ability. And remember, human means that I, I'm going to stuff, I'm going to make mistakes. There's going to be pain. There's going to be suffering. There's also going to be beauty and wonder. And sometimes it's, it's all mushed together. And sometimes it's overwhelming. And sometimes I have a bad day. And sometimes I have a good day. And it's okay. And when I do something wrong, when I stuff up, when I make mistakes, I need to say sorry or I need to correct make better, fix, but I don't define myself by it. Okay, so when I make an error, um, I've done something wrong. I'm not wrong. I have, I have done something wrong. Right, I just want to see if there's any... Um, questions? Right. So you may have come across this Viktor Frankl quote. And if you haven't come across Viktor Frankl before, then you need to go and Google Viktor Frankl. He wrote a, a very small book called The Purpose, things called the purpose of Life. Um, but this quote is very powerful in light of what we're talking about today. Is between the stimulus and response, there's a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. And in our response lies our growth and freedom. So, very simply, before we react or respond to anybody or anything, we have the power of choice. We have the power of pause. So what we're learning is reminding us that we 
as I spoke about humility. Humility gives you the ability to pause before you react. So personalities are different. So some of us are reactionary and some of us are slow to respond. Okay. Even if we're reactionary, we can't use that as an excuse. This quote is even more important to us because it gives us the power to respond effectively. Otherwise, we're going to go around punching people in the face continuously or cutting people off in the road or snapping at people. And when we do all those things, because we're guilty of them, hopefully not punching, um, we have lost the power of pause. We have allowed ourselves to do something without thinking. Okay. So we can't use that as an excuse because it ain't no excuse. It means we have to even be more intense in our practicing of humility so that we don't get hooked um, or we don't let people push our buttons to the extent that we, we react and we, um, and we respond. So as I've done in most of my webinars, the number one thing we can all do, and we're all capable of it, and it doesn't cost a thing, is, you know, we talk about, so what tools and tips and can, techniques do you have, David, to, to help me so I don't react? Well, the number one is to breathe. Remember what I said, everything that we talk about today, I want you to think of it as how do I take this? and apply it in my life at home and at work with my colleagues, with my line manager, with my clients, with my customers, with my children, with my mother-in-law. It can be used in all those environments. It's not for one particular space. So the power of breath, the science behind breath, is that we don't breathe effectively. We breathe, we, we, have, we do shallow breath. And what happens when we do shallow breath is that we don't, um, get enough oxygen into our body and we have stale air in our body and when we breathe effectively so when we take in a deep breath and and the lovely way of doing it to practice is as you take in a deep breath put your hand on your stomach and push your stomach out so picture yourself because we, we work wonders with imagery um, most humans so as you breathe in push your stomach out and fill it with oxygen. And as you breathe out, imagine that you're pushing your belly button up against your spine. So you're getting rid of the muck in your stomach and you're exhaling. Now, why that is effective is because what oxygen, and what does that do? Think about being reactionary. As soon as we breathe deeply, we um, lower our heart rates. And guess what that does? It calms us down. And we get oxygen into our brain. When we reactionary, when we hit people, when we cut people off, when we snap, it's because we don't have enough oxygen in our brain and we become stupid. Yes, we become stupid. That's why we do the things that we do. So when we breathe effectively, you are taking oxygen, calming yourself down, putting oxygen in your brain. Ah, and it makes you think clear clearly, more clearly, and makes you more intelligent. See, no magic wand. So uh, there's a wonderful tip that I learned, is when you're about to explode or snap or lose a plot um, with your partner, your child, a client, your team member, is to take in three sharp breath through your nose, and then to exhale. That's what they call an emergency breath. Yeah. So if it's not an emergency breath, um, there are a whole lot of wonderful breathing techniques. The full box is one of them. So you, you breathe in for four, uh, you hold for four, and you exhale for four. Okay. But in an emergency, this is what you need to do. Okay, so I want you to have that even if there are people around you. You breathe in three times sharply through your nose and you exhale. And you will notice instantaneously your body will react. Now, I'm going to do it once more. You will feel physiologically your body reacts to that because you're, you're actually tapping into 
um, your amygdala. Okay, so a lovely visual demonstration. Is this our this is our front, this is our brain, this is the frontal cortex. So this is the one that makes us think clearly and to be rational. Sorry, inside there yeah, what well, inside is the amygdala. This is the one that is triggered in an emergency. Okay. That's fight, flight, or freeze are sitting here. And as soon as there's fight, flight, or freeze, what happens? The, the frontal cortex releases and the amygdala takes over. So if you see what we're doing in a uh, when we are hitting people, when we're cutting, when we're snapping, we immediately see it as an emergency. So goodbye, rational thinking. Hello, irrationality. Um, and emergency. So it's necessary in an emergency. Okay. But we tend to we tend to use the amygdala for things that are not an emergency. Okay. This is for when the, the dragon or the dinosaur came to eat us, um, or there was a fire, or there was no food. I had to fight, freeze, or fight. Okay. But we we tap into this too often. This is where we should be. Okay, because it's not an emergency. Right, so this takes us to the refresher on feelings and emotions. Um, and very briefly, once again, this is pretty life-changing. We haven't seen this before. Just to remind us that there's over 34,000 emotions. And in this context, I'm going to merge, mush feelings and emotions together because they are separate. But the key here is to, to look at that and to say, look at this uh, wheel and to say that, to remind you that there are six core feelings and emotions, anger, sadness, surprise, joy, love, and fear. They are feelings. And every other feeling comes from those six core. So you can actually track your feeling back to those six core, okay? So the first step when it comes to feelings and emotions is to name it. Ah, so going back to what I said earlier, you're allowed to have contradicting feelings within an hour, within a day, in the same moment in time. You don't have to hang on to one, but we don't tend to spend the time naming it. We don't spend the time sitting and acknowledging what a feeling is because if you don't name it, you can't tame it. Okay, so it's good to not judge feelings. That's that's the first. Don't judge a feeling. Just say hello. Who are you? What are you? Let me name you. And then, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> or feeling as a visitor. The feelings do not define you. They are not facts. They are feelings. Okay, they're necessary because what are they? They're little reminders, little flags that something is up. Good, bad, or ugly. So if you see them as visitors, they come and they go. Because if you hang on to them, that's when it becomes problematic. That's when it affects us psychologically and physically. Okay? There's still people out there who believe that feelings don't affect you physically. You need to go and do some research. Okay? So we know they affect us psychologically and physically. They're not meant to stay. You must name it. Don't judge them. Let them come. And let them go. Making sure I covered everything. So it's just a flag. They're guesstimates. They're not facts. Name them. Then our, all our, our, our responsibility is to go and explore and to go, oh, oh, where is this coming from? Why, why am I feeling irritated? Why am I feeling anxious? Why am I feeling frustrated? Where is it coming from? Let's go and find the reason where it's coming from. And then once we do, and this is also a journey, is to then let it go. Okay. And a really helpful phrase is to rephrase, to say, I feel whatever. I feel angry. I feel irritable. I feel frustrated. I feel ignored. Um, I feel hurt. I feel frustrated. Instead of saying, I am. We tend to say, I am anxious, I am angry, I am frustrated. No, you're not, because you're not a feeling. So it might just be rephrasing, but psychologically, by rephrasing, you're separating yourself from the feeling. Okay. So always throw in the feel. 
And don't judge people by feelings. Don't fall into that trap. We're all guilty of it. We say, oh, that person's such an angry person. That child's such a shy child. No. No, 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 no. They're not a feeling. They just feel those things. Okay, so it's a, it's a very, very powerful and very important message that I want you to embrace and understand um, um, and to share. And then to help us on this journey of it's okay not to be okay, um, it's remembering that mindset is everything. And this isn't complicated. Okay, there's beautiful research done by Carol Dweck and others on um, – a fixed and growth mindset and i see out there there's other terminology being used which is fine okay but really at the end of the day we have a choice of whether we we growth mindset isn't being positive and everything's okay growth mindset is acknowledging the realities that i'm in and what now what what choices do i have to deal with the crap what choices do I have about load shedding, about uh, relationship issues with my child that's got ADHD, with my partner, um, with my mother-in-law, with my colleague, with my work levels, pressure. I have choices. As much as I don't want to acknowledge that or accept that, I do. Okay? Whereas fixed mindset is very limiting. Fixed life mindset is woe is me, the pity party. And I, it is... I'm in this situation. I can't change. It's my background, my upbringing, my circumstances. Life is unfair. I can't believe this is happening to me. Finger pointing. That's the mindset. As soon as we finger pointing and we're judging other people, that is a fixed mindset. Okay. Growth mindset is I, I'm a human. I'm fallible. I fail. I make mistakes, but I can grow. I can change. I can learn. I need. So, fixed mindset is. Woe is me. I can't believe it's happening to me. No cheating. And growth mindset is, oh, about this um, low cheating. Um, but what can I do? Mm, what options do I have? What, what can I do to, to make my environment better? You see, you're just shifting the language. You're just shifting the concepts. Okay. And then... What I found visualization is really helpful. This is this is perhaps foreign to many people, and and you know a lot of people do have tapped into um, doing meditating. Uh, some people battle with it um, and battle with it because in meditation the thought is that you've got to you've got to clear your 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 mind. No, it's not possible to clear your mind. You have to teach your mind to to, to, to receive things and then let them go. Okay. But all visualization is is um, thinking through something or removing yourself from the situation that you're in. So we can't. Let me just give you an example. So for me to give me to give me energy, I, I like to go outside. I need to. I, I like to go to the beach. I like to put my feet in the sand and go and have a swim. And of course, for me, swimming is like it's like. Phew, you, you're like you're being refreshed and sometimes if the sea is rough it shakes you up and throws spit you out just a human and it's just a speck and i mustn't be overwhelmed by 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 life because i'm part of this journey anyway um so we don't all get the opportunity to do that so how do we how do we cope in the moment so if you work you just had an awful experience where you can't get away from and you're able to escape through visualization. So thinking, <clears throat> reminding yourself, picturing yourself to be on a beach, for example. So I've just, I've got some images here. So often people can visualize just with an image. So find some images that you can pull up and look at and get lost in. There's the mindfulness, remember? In the moment, being lost in the beauty, the picture, the story, where is this? What is it about? What's happening here? Okay, so you can get lost in the story. Another example. Another example. Nature, animals, depending on who you are. Some of us like images that are, are creative or 
mountains or scenery or complexity and design. That's about finding our own story. Okay, so this that's just another technique that we can that we can use to to help us in that moment where we can't get to where we want to go. We can't go and exercise. We can't go and bake or cook or sew or do something creative because we're sitting at our desk. So what can I do? I can breathe. I can I can escape through some imagery. I can write. It's also exceptionally powerful from your head and on a piece of paper. Once again, don't judge it because a lot of people don't write because they judge their writing. They make it a chore. They go, but I don't have a book to write. In. Or what must I write? I don't know what to say. No one's coming to check. No one's coming to ask you to read your thoughts. Okay? It's your thoughts, and you'll be amazed. I think we all have, we all are inner writers. We all are inner authors. Um, but once again, we think we're not competent enough. No one said you're going to have to publish your writings. Okay? But it's very therapeutic. Because sometimes we can't express verbally how we're feeling, but we can express it through through writing. Okay, so reminder, remember, you are human. And I wanted to end off with this um, quote around from Brené Brown. Some of you may have seen it before, and if you follow Brené Brown, you will you will know it well, because I think it really helps on this, it's okay not to be okay journey. There are no rules. There are no rules. Okay, We have to all find our unique part and our unique story, and we have to often, because that's something that we shy away from, awkwardness. But awkwardness is telling you something. When we ever feel awkward about anything, it's telling us something, like feelings. It's saying, ah, something's up. It's an old flag. And what do we tend to do? We withdraw. No, 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 no. We need to lean in to find out why, David, are you feeling awkward about this situation, this person, whatever. Because the answers might very well be in the leaning into and going to find out. Okay? The second part is to stay brave. Very important. So bravery isn't owned by some people. You, we tend to go, oh, but I'm not a brave person. I'm not a courageous person. Yeah. We all are. Okay. So it's in, innate in us, yet it's a skill. Okay? Like, like empathy and compassion, you can learn it. You can get better at it. So bravery means, in this case, I'm brave to venture and to try new things and to do something I haven't done before and to stop with all these rules. Sometimes I have to bend rules. Sometimes I have to create rules for myself or break rules, other people's rules. Okay? Um, and then finally, to stay kind. Oh, and there's a link to humility and humbleness and empathy. I look after yourself. Uh -huh. You can't look after anybody else. That's what leads to burnout and resentment. When we, when we suffer from burnout and resentment, because we have not been looking after us, okay? We've been distracted or been giving ourselves to other people, to our jobs, to our partners, to our children. And you wonder why we could Okay, so we, we are our own worst enemies. It's not selfish. It's self-compassion. It's self-kindness. So do the things for you. Find the things for you to fill your cup, to give yourself energy, to be able to, to be able to engage and to be able to cope and survive in this crazy world. So the good news we can, but we can only survive if we practice these tools and tips and techniques. And you see, it's nothing external. It's nothing we have to, we have it within. Uh, so we are always our own worst enemies. And we have incredible power. And we're going to have good days. We're going to have bad days. We just need to practice. And through practice, we will find a way to continue. Okay, so it's not about perfectionist, being a perfectionist. It's about betterment and improvement with all the hiccups along the way. Because as much 
as we might embrace and take on all this beautiful content and concepts. Doesn't matter how well you practice these things, you're still going to stuff up. You're still going to have a tough time. But it's how do I cope and not let it destroy me? And actually believe that I can, um, I can get through it and I and I can survive. So thank you. Um, all ears. Um, please will you drop um any questions you have in the chat or the q and a um these are my contact details i'm happy to unpack further with anybody okay there's my contact details my email address my linkedin facebook and hopefully if i'm um if i'm not if i don't respond immediately I'll, i'm on the beach um, recovering giving me the ability um ability to cope but i'd love to um hear from you now um and answer any any questions that you that you may have okay or you can just pop me any questions that you may have on my email um thank you for your um for your comments any questions please feel free to to pop them in Anything related to the content? Um, thank you, everybody, for your kind comments. So go forth and go forth and practice. Try one thing. Try one thing. Um, don't let it just be theory. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, you too. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for your kind comments. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. I'm very pleased, Suzanne. Thank you, Jan. Good Jan. Well done, Irene. Yep. Sometimes it's just a reminder. So often it is. We know the stuff, we don't practice it. Thank you, Annaline. Thank you for taking the time to, to attend because it's so easy not to attend these sessions. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. And see you on the far side. Ciao.